Congratulations to Asif and I think a terrific moment for snooker in Pakistan. Then of course we move on and we talk about cricket in particular and first of all we discuss uh, Pakistan Shaheen squad that has been announced for their upcoming series against Sri Lanka A and uh, Mohamed Hurera has been made the skipper for both white ball and red ball uh, formats that are part of this series as well. Welcome development but you know I'm a bit concerned that our indicators are really messed up. We either do not include anyone or straight away make him the captain and you know if anything goes wrong and then all all onus is going to be on him and then that talk of the town will finally end. So we're going to talk about that in detail. Then of course we move on and we discuss uh, under-19 cricket in detail. Pakistan is now up for a tri-series of under-19 which will feature Afghanistan under-19, UAE under-19 and Pakistan under-19. So a lot of cricket up on grabs as well and of course I think it's a great moment for the youngsters to uh, take part in this series as well. So this is what we're discussing in detail and then of course we talk about Pakistan's tour to Australia. The Adelaide Oval is now all set to host the second one international and Pakistan are to make some changes as well. Australia for their third one international uh, which will be after this second one of course have announced a completely different side, a different captain. So looks like they're going to wrap up the series in this game. Whether we can surprise them or not will be the question of the hour as well. So we take that on the show as well. Time now to introduce the guests. First of all in studios joining us is fellow anchor and sports expert, Mr. Sayyid Mohammed Awais. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Wa alaikum salam Ahmed how are you? I'm very well, thank you for joining us. We've also been joined by sports expert, Wa alaikum salam Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum, how are you, sir? Wa alaikum salam Ahmed. Talking about Pakistan Shaheens and their newly appointed skipper, let's take a look at this report. Herrera has been appointed Pakistan Shaheen's captain for the 2-4 day and 3.50 over matches against Sri Lanka A at the Rawalpindi Cricket Stadium from 11 to 29th November. 22-year-old Mohamed Herrera has scored 3,310 runs in 40 first-class matches with 8 centuries and 14 half-centuries. The Red Bull squad will commence training session from 6 November while Sri Lanka A will arrive on 8 November before starting their preparations on 9 November. PCB has also confirmed Empire and Matt officials for the series. The squad includes Mohamed Herrera, Abdul Fassi, Ahmed Safi Abdullah, Ali Zariab, Heather Ali, Hussein Talat, Kashif Ali, Kharam Shehzad, Mohamed Ghaza Ghori, Mohamed Ramiz, Mohamed Wasim Jr., Rohail Nazi, Saad Khan, and Samim Gul. Well, there you have it. All you need to know about Herrera in this report by Malaika. Of course, uh, Aves, it is a welcome development, uh, but the fact is that, you know, you keep on ignoring someone and then immediately you draft him after a lot of pressure and then you make him the skipper. This is some sort of concern for me at least. That's called Pakistan cricket board for you because, <laughs> I mean, see, if you just watch the whole scenario, if you remember, I, I'm not a, I won't say that he deserved a place or something, but uh, before this, for under-19, uh, sorry, for, for Pakistan Shaheens, wherever we went, the captain was Harris. Suddenly, you see Horera coming up as a captain for you. It's a different format still. But Ahmed Bay, if you just watch out Hurera, how many matches has he captained Pakistan? He hasn't even captained the under-19 of Pakistan. So the pressure situation cooking up on him, obviously, I told you, whenever you're captain of Pakistan, any side, whether if it's under-19, Pakistan, Shaheens, it's just not the playing level you have to captain. You have to captain the media. You have to even captain your whatever stuff is going on in the Pakistan cricket board. So it's not an easy job. I hope it does not reflect on his batting. But one thing is good about the Pakistan cricket is that you have got many cricket coming up. Even if you talk about the under-19, they are there to play in UAE. It's a good development, I would say, for the under-19 cricketers. If you talk about Pakistan, Shaheens, it has been like two to three, I would say, hardly two years that you're seeing more cricket for Pakistan, Shaheens. Because I remember if you just go way back, we used to say, where are Pakistan A2s? It has been just lost on. It's a good sign, but the biggest thing, what again, I would say, you have got tools, even if you have, have four or five tools, but what is the end result? The players who perform well in this circuit, will they be dropped to the Pakistan team? Because that gap between Pakistan, uh, Shaheens and Pakistan, that needs, needs to be fulfilled because whatever happens, that player, uh, they vanish. I mean, they never see, you never see that player. I don't know where they go on. So this is the right time that Pakistan needs to look at the backup creators, like what Australia has done against Pakistan for the third, uh, third ODA, that you need to do for Pakistan Shaheens too. Well, certainly. Uh, 
obviously i think uh, at this moment in time usman uh, it's a good omen like aves mentioned that at least we have these tours now for shaheens and under 19 but then again the fact is that you know like i said we're uh, a very tricky nation when it comes to cricket so i either we're not talking about anyone at all even though he's performing or he's immediately the captain or he's immediately sent home that is what exactly pakistan cricket is made up of as i said exactly uh, suddenly uh, hurera has popped up and he has made the he's made the captain of pakistan a so let's hope he does well uh, he gets a good result in the series and he scores well as well too because uh, just performing well will not suffice maybe as a captain and if series is won and he doesn't perform that also does not suffice but he has got a central contract that means he's in the picture in the bigger picture for that matter in the pakistan cricket board so let's hope he a good future is around the corner for him and let's hope it all begins from pakistan that the shaheen tour to sri lanka is the beginning of some good things to come because he has a good chance in test cricket but uh, the planning that is going on with these players is is misunderstood and uh, pcb for that matter does not usually have a planning for that look at saim ayub he was suddenly pumped up into the pakistan national team he did not play uh, many uh, shaheen tours but uh, hurera for that matter we were talking about and many of the analysts were talking about giving him a chance in pakistan national test team but he has been uh, straight away brought into the shaheens and he has been made captain so a gradual progression i think is good for him as well and if he gets going in uh, shaheen colors uh, a national debut is around the corner and all the best to him and his team for this tour well certainly that could be you know a pathway for him as well that if he's performing here but then again i think there have been notable performances already and uh, obviously it might be a moment as well because the pathway to pakistan cricket right now does involve the pakistan shaheen circuit as well so kashif how do you see this development <coughs> i guess uh, it's good for hurera let's uh, uh, you know sitting on the benches uh, of pakistan team pakistan national squad Uh, and playing for Shaheen against an international team, that uh, for second option is uh, a brightly suited option for Herrera. Going through the captaincy burden again will polish his skills, not just the batting skill, but his overall personality. Uh, leading Parks and Shaheen in an away tour also uh, uh, will helpful for him. It will support him during his uh, uh, you know uh, uh, debut for Pakistan. So most probably he is in line for the debut. This is where. uh the pcb is going and most probably they'll be thinking that let's give hurera a chance to find out how he can manage the burden of captaincy as well as uh, touring uh, away uh, from home most important thing for me when it comes to pakistan shaheen is now pakistan shaheen team means that you are a potential candidate to represent pakistan in the very near future it's no more just the psl it's no more just the tv oriented wide world cricket matches it's it's a proper setup in place you play for the shaheen you become part of pakistan setup you play for uh, uh, you know you, you you play in the domestic cricket you become part of the pakistan setup it's just not the one way traffic it's now a multi dimensional routes going towards the pakistan lineup uh, pakistani team and this is very uh, heartening to see i i guess uh, this is where pcb needs uh some encouragement and also credit because from kamran gulam into the pakistan team pura mm-hmm. becoming the shaheen's captain uh, khuram shizad coming in the pakistani lineup and all those guys even amir hamza this is with, and they haven't have played psl so this is very important that pakistan team means this you, you you have to be good in your domestic cricket well certainly i think the series starts from 11th of november with matches all in rawal pindi it's going to be very very interesting <coughs> that we see this forward and now we talk about pakistan second one international against australia let's take a look at this report Pakistan cricket team received a boost ahead of the second one day international against Australia scheduled for 8 November as pace bowler Naseem Shah has recovered from his injury Naseem had to leave the field in the first one day international due to cramps but after participating in a training session at the Adelaide Oval reports confirm he is fully fit and ready for the selection the team continued their preparations with a practice session at Adelaide focusing on batting bowling and fielding Pakistan cricket team will practice again tomorrow. Pakistan had a strong performance in the first one day international despite losing by 2 wickets at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Australia leads the three match series by 1-0. The last time both sides featured one day international series in 2022 when Australia visited Pakistan and the host won the series by 2-1. 
And there you have it, uh, all you need to know in this report. Aves, uh, what are we looking forward to now in the second one in international? Australia looks to wrap up the series. One thing is good, Ahmed Bay, this series has a lot of excitement in it because the way Pakistan played in the first match, I know there were some problems with the batting order, but Pakistan was superb. They looked back as a gelled up unit. The fast bowling was on the lineup. But uh, as a captain, I would say a little bit mistakes. Obviously, it was his first assignment as an international Pakistan skipper. Uh, when there was a 70 80 runs partnership, you could have added a spinner over here. Aga Salman could have couple, uh, balled a couple of overs. You could have got that throughout wickets. When Mitchell Stark was batting, you could have uh, targeted him. So there were some things over here, but the field placement was good. Communication was very good with the fast bowlers, with the, with the players, the way he was getting them pumped up. But the biggest issue is your batting order. Your batting needs to click. For, uh, uh, if you talk about Saim Ayyub, you talk about Abdullah Shafiq, they haven't been consistently not performing well, but still they're getting chances over here. Everyone speaks about Saim Ayyub, but you have got a lot of case studies. I mean, he hasn't been a perfect opener for you. The, there has been some issues with that. Same if you just travel in the middle order. The biggest issue what you see is that run a ball because when you talk about the uh, when you talk about runs in in the power play it's unfortunate we are still in that kind of scenario where you score just three to four runs per over you hardly touch six or seven runs per over in the power play what what is the last time when you had a 80 90 runs partnership a quick 80 90 runs partnership that's what hurting pakistan in the middle order i personally feel in the in the second odia because it's going to be a tough one for you because what news was coming up, we and you were sitting up that third ODA, they have totally changed the team. Mm -hmm. So it's, it would be exciting to watch if Pakistan rests Hasnan, if it's possible, and get uh, Yas, uh, get Arafat Minhasin because you need a spinner over here. Edlid wicket is going to be a drop-in wicket. They, it is used for cricket, it is used for soccer. Uh, on the third day in the test matches, you do get uh, some turnover here. It's, it's a one-day team, but still I feel spinner would play a role over here because Nathan Lyon has got 63 wickets over here. So, spinner will dominate over here. Absolutely. Uh, Usman, uh, what kind of changes can Pakistan go through? Because there won't be many, obviously. Uh, but then again, adding one spinner, if it is true that Arfat Minas is going to make a debut, is going to be interesting. And considering that, you know, Adelaide is a run's paradise. Uh, there is going to be one or two changes only because after just one game, you know, you're not going to change the half side. And I think after the first game, which uh, unexpectedly became a very competitive game, one of the major reasons was because of the drop and pitch. If Pakistani batsmen couldn't uh, perform, likewise for Australia as well. And that was something that Pakistani uh, camp actually took that from that game. But they are also worried or they are also uh, uh, considered, uh, considering the pitch that they are going to have in Adelaide that is not going to be as uh, poor as uh, they had it in Melbourne. So it's going to be a slightly better pitch and uh, the pa Pakistani batsmen need to get some good runs on the board. Uh, you are not going to score 200 and put Australia in a fix every now and then. So a any score above to 250 to 60 would be a good score against Australia and Pakistan have a bowling lineup to disturb the Australian batting lineup. Australia is definitely beatable. Uh, but uh, the thing is that you need to have runs on the board. And I think there is going <coughs> to be one fast bowler to be dropped and uh, come in comes a spinner. Well, that might just be a trump card for Pakistan. But then again, I think it's all about how our batters are going to perform as well. So, Kashif, how do you see us performing in Adelaide? And what's the kind of strategy Pakistan should go with considering there will be runs on offer? I guess Adelaide is oval. Oval-shaped ground. We, talk, we, we always say Adelaide oval. When we talk about oval-shaped grounds, uh, the spinners can become a tricky thing because square boundaries are uh, relatively short and down the ground is always the longest boundary and mid, when we talk about the odds, pocket towards mid wicket or extra court, they are the longest fences uh, ever recorded in the cricketing history. So, uh, I, I still remember that uh, Ms. Ba's incident with Suhail Khan and Suhail, uh, when, when the hmm. shot goes to that part of the uh, ground and uh, Suhail was running yeah, and he, he, kicked he, it. He, he kicks it out because <laughs> batsmen were about to run five. So, this is where Adelaide has a tricky uh, situation. The field placements, the bowling changes, the the kind of bowlers we want to introduce, the, the kind of batters we want to play up there, it, it's always a different. And this is where the Australia has got so much to offer. Uh, from one match to other match, the whole complexion of the cricketing quality changes. And most probably we uh, as an Asian nation are most suited to play in Sydney and Adelaide. Adelaide and <coughs> we, uh, we just won't, won't have to, uh, to, uh, to play in the GABA, MCG and Perth. So, this track can offer a little bit of uh, uh, quality batting surface and also a quality spinner might add up uh, to the team. But when, go, when going through Pakistan, it's a long tail too. We do consider and we do say or even Shaheen say himself that he is an all-rounder and seems 40 run, uh, 30 odd run, that can save Pakistan because eventually we, we, we uh, 
touch down that 200 mark but this is not going to happen every day so these four, four bowlers i'll be dropping two of them and most probably amir jamal can make into the team uh, i can replace hasan for amir jamal even uh, uh, you know arfad minhas for uh, against uh, three of those bowlers uh, one can be drop haris uh, naseem and shaheen but uh, let's find out how the pitch behave and this this can happen only when we go through those pitches uh, which we are playing well kashif uh, the uh, i think the uh, confidence should be there now i think even though that they lost the first game but because they played very well so that dressing room environment would be on a very positive note at the moment you know as a cricketer myself i i always believe if you want to see what's happening in the dressing room just find out the faces or the body language of the players in the field remember kamran gulam standing at silly point having a chat with pat cummins <laughs> sledging pat cummins sledging <laughs> <laughs> so when was was sorry but what was he saying i'm mean, seriously <laughs> he don't have to understand what is he saying uh, he saying something very different and pat cummins was therefore in the pressure that he couldn't understand what he's saying yeah. so going through all those emotions of the bo- or the body language in the field that shows they are very positive about their cricket uh, in the in, in, in that in that field second important thing they have got the confidence of the captain to sledge the australian <laughs> captain it's just not easy you know playing down under we always think ourselves or our team that they are the underdogs and yeah. uh, we we been there with the one you know best of the best we have got i saw I, i saw an iconic moment of stump mics uh, in the first one international when babar azam was caught saying ben stokes when you know he was just trying to grab a throw that came his way but swan do you also agree that that dressing room environment is on a positive level at the moment it's going to help us in this game as well it is actually uh, someone uh, in the dressing room i spoke to uh, told me this that uh, they were very very happy with their performance after the first game although they lost it and uh, that was one disappointing aspect because they came so close to the victory so the environment is very good they are very confident and somehow uh, the uh, the mood in the camp has changed that they can actually beat australia and they came very close in uh, melbourne a ground where they are not uh, they don't have a excellent record let's uh, let's put it this way but adelaide is something that will slightly suit pakistan if wherever there is uh, an advantage for slight spin uh, asian teams do uh, get their job done most often than not and i think pakistan has a good chance uh, against uh, australia in adelaide and uh, with the confidence they are going in and with babar azam uh, what i am told is that babar azam is putting in a lot of extra effort not just extra a lot of extra effort uh, during his training and he has been a masterful trainer of his self development that has been his history but uh, Uh, what i am told that he is putting in extra effort so uh, all in all the environment in the team is very good the players that have been dropped even your superstar batsman he is also uh, trying to prove a point and th- that that gives a good omen about this team and if pakistan does uh, get one over australia in the second third can be anybody's game and pakistan uh, if w- uh, pakistan wins this series it's going to be magic for them and d- do wonders for the champions trophy that is around the corner Emma, absolutely can, yes can, can, we played the first match mm-hmm. with two debut outs mm-hmm. going down under playing strong australian side with two debut outs and putting up this fight it's just not an easy task this is mm. you know this is just not mm. easy for any asian <coughs> team to play two debut outs in a one day match starting the series and put up that fight so most probably uh, this is pakistan's a uh, quality uh, match uh, when we talk about the first match Start well there are two very interesting stats at the end of the show i'm probably going to highlight them which will make a lot of sense so 93 uh, matches have been played here one international 49 have been won batting first 42 batting second average first inning scores are 226 and the second is 198 but what's more interesting the highest ever total recorded at the adelaide oval in one day international cricket is 369 for 7 by australia against pakistan and the lowest defended was 70 by australia against new zealand but what's even more interesting the highest chase has been 303 by sri lanka against england but the lowest defended has been 140 and that was defended by pakistan against west indies so i think two different stats that speak volumes but then again it's going to be a very interesting one on the 8th of this month thank you very much malik usman ahmed Uh, Sayed Mohammad Awais and uh, Kashif for joining us. I think uh, we're in for a great one international once again. And whatever the results may be, uh, it's a good moment to enjoy Pakistan cricket. That wraps it up for me and my entire team. It's goodbye for now.